uh, the jury is, is contemplating whether a black guy who was accused of killing a white girl in Chicago in the 50s is guilty or not. And that's very difficult. So look how the whole movie shows how one person didn't believe that and convinced the rest of the people of not uh, believing this. I don't understand you people. I mean, all these picky little points you keep bringing up, they don't mean nothing. You saw this kid just like I did. You're not going to tell me you believe that phony story about losing the knife and that business about being at the movies. Look, you know how these people lie? It's born in them. I mean, what the heck? I don't have to tell you. They don't know what the truth is. And let me tell you, they don't need any real big reason to kill someone either. No, sir. They get drunk. All oh, their real big drinkers, all of them. You know that. And bang, someone's lying in the gutter. Well, nobody's blaming them for it. That's the way they are, by nature. You know what I mean? Violent. Where are you going? Human life don't mean as much to them as it does to us. Look, they're rushing it up and fighting all the time. And if somebody gets killed, so something gets killed, they don't care. Oh, sure, there's some good things about them, too. Look, I'm the first one to say that. I've known a couple who are okay, but that's the exception, you know what I mean? Most of them are like they have no feelings. They can do anything. What's going on here? Well, I'm trying to tell you. You're making a big mistake, you people. This kid is a liar. I know it. I know all about them. Listen to me. They're no good. There's not a one of them who's any good. I mean, what, what's happening in here? I'm speaking my piece and... You, listen to me. Ah, we're, we're, this kid on trial here, he's, he's tied, well, well, don't you know about them? There's a, there's a danger here. These people are dangerous. They're wild. Listen to me. Listen to me. I have. Now sit down and don't open your mouth again. So I'm trying to tell you. It's always difficult to keep personal prejudice out of a thing like this. And wherever you run into it, prejudice always obscures the truth. I don't really know what the truth is. I don't suppose anybody will ever really know. Nine of us now seem to feel that the defendant is innocent. But we're just gambling on probabilities. We may be wrong. We may be trying to let a guilty man go free. I don't know. Nobody really can, but we have a reasonable doubt, and that's something that's very valuable in our system. No jury can declare a man guilty unless it's sure. This is the treatment, as you saw. If you see somebody prejudiced, there's no point of even conducting a dialogue at that point. We're beyond that dialogue. If they say... We're better because of this. It's, it's, at that point, is just leave them alone. Exaggeration. We live in a world of exaggeration. We see it every day. Everything is exa exaggerated around us. Okay? It's to the degree that it distorts reality. It's a different type of illusion of reality. Uh, causes of it, the cause of exaggeration is we either exaggerate positively or negatively. And we, we, we exaggerate positively because we love someone so much, and negatively, and uh, vice versa. We love fairy tales. We like those fairy tales and ascribing uh, uh, supernatural uh, uh, things to who we love. Forms of exaggeration, either in comp uh, com compliments or defamation or organized uh, things. I think I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to rush because I see probably you're waiting for drivers or so. So I'm just going to take you through some of the things. Um, 
exaggeration linguistically. This is one thing that comes out of an Islamic textbook. And this is just the introduction telling you about who the author is. He is uh, one of the uh, Sha'rani students talked about him. He said, our master and Lord and role model to Allah, the Imam of the ascertainers, the example of the knowers, and upbringer of the poor and the seekers, by the strongest means of enabling the opener of the logs of the vague meanings of the inferences of the ascertainers and the pathway of the symbols of the problems of the knowers, the middle of the necklace of the walkers and the basal of the existence of the ones who just reached. You don't understand the thing. In Arabic, it's the same thing. You don't understand anything. It's all just a big, huge exaggeration. However, 2011 on Facebook, this is what's on somebody's profile. I know this guy. Knowledge sculpture, capsulizer, teacher of the arts of added values to oneself, designer of the methodology of worship planning and ritual engineering and soul richness, simplifier of the skills of seasons and maps of reaching, founder of the dictionary of psychology, of the effect of the Quranic word and its context, and finding the intelligent connections to the relationship of the system of human excellence representation by phosphoric halos in the Holy Quran. Well, life is what it is. Teacher of the rules of common sense. This is what he had in Arabic, though. I, I translated it yesterday. It took me like 30 minutes to translate it. This is what he's saying about himself. So it's a huge form of exaggeration. You have negative exaggeration. This is Ann Coulter. This is what she had to say about the Muslims after September 11. We should invade their countries, kill their leaders, and convert them to Christianity. You look at her, she's very beautiful. But when she talks, she's spouting out evilness. Everything is she's so prejudiced against the Muslims. But somehow, I don't know how. I mean, that's what I heard. It, 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 it might not be true that she got a Muslim boyfriend after all that. This is exaggeration. I swear to you, Ralph, the mouse was that big. He's telling about the mouse that he just killed. So we deal with exaggeration every, every time. This is also about poetry. Poetry, although, as I told you, it helped convey the thing, it helped them, but it was also full of exaggeration. This was Amr ibn Kulthum, Mu'allaqa, the, the hanged, where he said, we own the world and who lives in it. And when we beat, we beat with ability. We fill the land until it can fit not no more. And we fill all the sea with ships. And he lived in a tent in the desert. He didn't even see the sea or the, or the ocean. So that thing also. And he never reached or saw the one. This is... A, a story which is like it says more than you can imagine and this is what here is uh, they first start when they tell you the story when they want to exaggerate they have to tell you the the authority of it so he's saying that this is uh, this looks unreal but the guy that told me this is the head of the police then he goes and says where it was published doesn't mean anything then he goes and talks about it he was uh, standing at, at Dijla at the at the, at, at the, uh, at the river and he saw there was um, a frog running quickly or swimming quickly from one end of the, of the river to the other. And then on it, there was a scorpion on top of it. So when it reached there, it unloaded the scorpion. The scorpion went there and stung something. And there was a guy that was asleep. And then he looked, and it had stung a snake. The snake was about to beat or to bite the, uh, to bite the, the guy that was sleeping. And the scorpion came on top of a frog, crossed the river, and killed the snake. And this is a true story. And then he asked about him, and that he told him that this guy was so good to his parents, and that's why God saved him. So the question is, why, God, why did God send the, the snake in the first place to beat this guy, or to bite this guy? So, and then it is all like it's in a newspaper. And the guy here, Dr. Abdul Wadud Chaleb, he even holds a PhD in something, or a doctor, and he's talking nonsense about something exaggeration organized exaggeration for the millionth time we did not exaggerate that we did not find or th there were weapons of mass destruction organized exaggeration went on to the united nations and they got approval to go ahead and hit iraq treatment there's no treatment for for uh, uh exaggeration and racism except you've just got as i said to to shun it away and not not deal with it Finally, imbalanced, imbalanced reactions, and then there's a video that talks about all this. Every action begets a reaction. This is a healthy phenomenon. That's fine, okay? Action gets a reaction. But 
When every action gets the same reaction, that's no longer healthy. Somebody can test you for this. So that's what it means, you get the knee jerk reflex. The doctors here know that. It's like you hit the knee and you get a jerk of it. So people can do something called reaction engineering. They test balloon you and they know exactly how you're gonna behave. And when they know how you behave, they can behave accordingly. They can go around it and circumvent it. So some of the examples of actions begetting reactions which became unhealthy. The Arabs at one time became prejudiced against all non-Arabs, and this begot the rise of the anti-Arab movement in the third century. Uh, when they started looking down upon the servants, the servants taught themselves, and they became the scholars of the Muslim nation. Um, exaggeration and expenditure, living in luxury, indulging themselves, resulted in zuhud. The people just neglected everything and they no longer wanted to deal with life. The Turkish Turani movement at the, at the beginning of the 20th century begot the Arab nationalism movement. And this is what robbed the Ottoman Caliphate. Exaggeration to call to wisdom uh, in, in, in fixing uh, all the problems. And it, it just called, so every time the youth wanted something, that's in the, in the uh, 1990s and 2000s, Everybody was telling them to calm down. They took arms and they resorted to violence and bombing things, uh, shutting down all charities. That's being fixed now. So now charities are being uh, done with. Solutions. There are three th solutions for, uh, for uh, imbalanced reaction. Number one is try not to trigger the reaction. So if you know the action that's going to trigger it, don't do that. And this verse talks about it clearly. Uh, insult not those whom they, they worship besides Allah, lest they insult Allah. So don't go and tell somebody your God is a bad God because he's going to curse your God. So that's one of the, of the ways. The other one uh, is action. Just be active. Don't be inactive. And then the third one is create a new nice solution, a new unexpected reaction like Gandhi did in the 19... 30s and 40s. This is the video that will summarize the imbalanced reactions and all the uh, mentality of mal reasoning. And then we will. بعد اعتداء شبان المصريين على حافلة كانت تقل الطريق الجزائري بعد وصوله إلى مصر. الجزيرة الرياضية في السودان أن مجموعة من الجماهير الجزائرية قامت بالاعتداء على مشجعين مصريين بالقرب من مقر السفر. الأمور في حدودها ذلك بعد التوتر الذي نجم عن مواجهتي المنتخبين. دعوت موسى جلت على هامش افتتاح مؤتمر في دبي يعظم المنتدى الاقتصادي العالمي. وكان الاعلام المصري تناقل انباء عن مجموعات جزائريه اعتدت على مشجعين مصريين في الخرطوم مضيفا ان عددا منهم اصيبوا بجروح واشار الى ان الجماهير الجزائريه كانت تحمل اسلحه بيضاء استعملتها اثناء الاعتداء